Go to any comedian and they'll tell you about being raised by single mothers and abusive single mothers, and it'll be a joke. And they will laugh at it. My mama used to beat me with a rope, with a <laughs> robo. Yeah, mine did too. And you think I'm in it. Preach! This is horrible. This is a felony. Ah, my f body. My little brother. As suburban as it gets, uh, he had a, in, in my parents' house, he had a, a, a shoe closet that was bigger than most of his friends' actual room, just for shoes. But I caught him out once with his friends. He like, she is shouting, you know what I'm saying, Muff? And I was like, what? <laughs> so I pulled him over and I said, why are you talking like that? He said, shh. He said, you have to talk like this or you won't get accepted. He said, the girls won't like you and the guys won't accept you as, as a friend. And I was like, this is insane. We weren't raised like this. You've seen no parts of the hood, sir. Yeah, and it's what's funny, people like my, my dad who genuinely did, he actually is from the part inside of Eight Mile that Eminem likes to claim he's from. Um, and, uh, you know, really did have a, a rough upbringing, but it, it doesn't matter. A great example, you know, I think Ben Carson, is such a good, a worst surrogate ever. <laughs> it's just like, like, what do you think about Donald Trump? I think he might, maybe we should ban the Second Amendment. No, Ben. No, Dr. Ben. That's not the right answer. But um, people said, well, he's not really black. I'm like, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Detroit raised to a single mother in Detroit, tried to stab her. Like, this is not a, this is not Barack Obama playing or for the B team. He's the all-star of the black team. Like, if you're going to use those standards, so it seems like even... Even with those standards, it's all negated if he pulls himself out of it. Yep. Uh, look, Barack Obama is extra black, which I don't understand. His black father wasn't around. He was raised by his white mother around mostly white people. Yeah. But all of a sudden, he's Mr. Black. And I hear them say it because he married a black woman. I'm like, really? Well, that pretty much is the first black woman he'd ever talked to. And this, <laughs> I, I, I believe this all had something to do with politics. You know he could not have gotten to where he is if he had a white wife with him. It wouldn't have played uh, to most of America. But he's able to go out and be the blackest thing going when he doesn't have the black experience. And I don't understand how black people can be... Well, why am I saying this? Because black people have been brainwashed by liberals and Democrats for all these years. If you ever notice, and you can tell a black person this, why is it that every place in America that's very, very violent has two things in common. One single mother's two Democrats. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's, people, we were talking about that with Phil, Phil advised. It goes back to Lyndon Johnson and a model cities program and basically creating an incentive for women to marry the state. I mean, he said he was going to have those Negroes voting Democrat for the next X amount of years. These are well-documented quotes. It wasn't because they cared about black people. It was just like now with illegal immigrants. The votes came cheap at that point. Um, create the division right now. Listen, there's nothing, there's nobody who's more shortchanged by the current Democratic proposals, Democratic Party proposals with illegal immigrants than people like my mom, legal immigrants who've come in, who've, and by the way, this myth, I wrote about this, that immigrants are the backbone of America. No, America was. It doesn't matter where they came. They came here to be American and be a part of America. The immigration wasn't the, the immigrant wasn't the label. It was you became American. So when you have people coming here illegally who have no interest in American values, who have no interest in taking part in the experiment that is America, well, guess what? Not only are they cutting ahead in line, but they're screwing up and destroying the America that all the legal immigrants sought. You literally had to have watched me last night because we talked about this. We talked about how the Democrats are undercutting uh, the voting populace. What they're saying is, well, shoot, we'd love to have those um, felons. So let's let the felons vote because they'll vote for us because we'll offer them something free. They're really just going to the lowest common denominator, and I hate saying it, but that's what they're doing. Yeah. They're going to people with their hands out and saying, well, we'll give you a little something if you give us your vote because yeah. it's the cheapest way around them getting a voting populace. And they've done that with the um, the illegal immigrants when they were saying, well, we should get them uh, worker cards and uh, driver's license. So, uh, And it's like they're making excuses for these people to stay un-American. So they get to fly their flag of where they're from not learn your language and all of the things that used to be a part of becoming American. Now being a separatist in America is the norm. That's funny that you mean. It's one of the things to me that's always been relatively common sense. Like, hey, you broke the law. Mm -hmm. What do you vote on our next one? What should the law be? <laughs> uh, you know, you got Charles Manson. Uh, 
to kill the Jews. Well, we'll take that into consideration. Be sure members of the ballot box. Like, I mean, I understand if you've served your time as well, but there have even been proposals for felons in prison to be able to vote. Like, they go that mm -hmm. far if they could do it. It's just like, we'll scale it back for right now. Mm -hmm. and look at what they're doing in Minnesota. A guy from Minnesota called me last night and he was talking about what they were doing with uh, these Somali refugees, that their, their um, governor is asking for more of them because he knows if he gets more of them, he can increase the Democratic um, fan base, as I would call them, because they're fanatics. Yeah, They're literally voting for Democrat just because they see a D, because they believe, like a lot of people when Barack Obama was elected, we believe he's going to give us free stuff. And they literally came out in public and said, black people are going to get free stuff. And they believe this. Why would they believe this? And why is it okay for them to believe it? Well, they got the, the phone, didn't they? Yeah. They got the phone. Oh, my gosh. I, I, know, I know that must be the stuff from your nightmares, that Obama phone lady, because she is like every negative stereotype that the actual white nationalists have. But I just find it so, Obama got us a phone! And then the funniest thing is someone goes, the person clearly banned him with the camera goes, yeah, what about Mitt Romney? Mitt Romney sucks! <laughs> <laughs> I just had that as like a ringtone on my phone. We got us a phone! Mitt oh, Romney it was Mitt Romney sucks. Like, I'm sorry. Like, again, I, are you laughing because she's? Yes, I'm laughing because of the way she speaks, and it's just, it is everything about it is funny to me. Right, and and a lot of this stuff is it. It would be even more funny if it wasn't true. Right. Like the things they're saying and the things you're seeing, you hope they're caricatures of of, of something, but it, it's not. It's. Right actually their lives they're actually thinking this way like i've watched on twitter and i don't know how much you go through twitter and just watch it you'll watch every time a black person says something that is common sense they'll say you must be a trump voter like how is that number one even a bad thing like black people act like voting for other rich white people is somehow revolutionary because right. before barack obama you pretty much just had one white person versus another one mm -hmm. and both were rich but they've convinced the black people that the white person with the D beside their name is all about you and all about the poor, even though John Edwards was getting $800 haircuts and cheating on his wife with cancer. But he's all about you. <laughs> cheating on his wife with, a, with cancer with a pregnant lady. I don't think it gets any <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my gosh. The guy is just an absolute scuzzball. Um, it is one of those things, if like if, you're, if we're going to be simplistic, right, if we're going to, to be reductive, I guess, to, to find a word where people are like, well, you know, the, the Republicans are the party of the rich. Okay, let's go with that. So they need rich people in order to be elected. So they would have an incentive to make you rich. rich because they need a majority of the country to be rich, not the 1%. 1% doesn't get you elected, sweetheart. So if Democrats are the party of the poor, they need a majority of the country to be well, see, Stephen, that's where you're messing up. That's where you messed up in your uh, a slaughtering of the advised show. Because once you talk to someone whose name is advised show, you probably probably won at that point. On a <laughs> <laughs> but the fact is, once you bring up facts to the so-called pro-blacks, to the liberal left, to the social justice warriors, they go crazy. They go nuts. They shut down. Johnny Five needs to be rebooted. Yeah. Well, he just kept telling me, you know, you don't know because you're not black with the black experience. But I just think it's such an intellectual cop out. But this, we got a black guy here. He's got to have the inside scoop on the advice show name. He's got. I'm sure he knows. Yeah, I was going to ask you. Okay, he messed up. Number one, I have a beef with the guy because the guy literally took all of the stuff that I was doing. He used to be a fan of my show when I started. He used to be a caller in, and then he just started becoming me. Like everything I did, he just did it. Okay. And so we would buy all of his stuff on. Uh, but class year, have you seen those? Have you seen those ties? Yes. Yeah. Well, that all changed once people start calling. Now, they keep stealing this guy's stuff. So like, he became the anti me of, well, let me be pro black then, because I think he's not, and I can get this audience. But the advice show came from he was trying to spell advice, and he refused because most people are. <laughs> you, you win the betting pool. Yeah, he was trying to we... spell advice, and a lot of people, just like if you look, most black people for some reason cannot uh, spell you, your. Y-O-U-R-E. They will always spell it Y-O-U-R. And it doesn't matter um, how many times you tell them that's not correct. They will say, oh, so you think you white now? Instead of, like, you can't correct He them. doesn't even know what advice is. He should have had someone advise him on how to spell. <laughs> Careful, Jared, because this, this is still the web extended. You don't want to. We want to have Phil back. We do. I don't but, think he's coming back. But we called that. Yeah, we no. did. A long time ago.
Yeah, that was it was and I used to make fun of him about it. That's why I was like, come on, dude. It, and it was funny. If you look, there's a guy on, um, on YouTube and he's a bit slow and he was the original advice show, <laughs> but he was saying advice. So he actually took this name from a what is the politically correct term? Retarded. Mental. Yeah. No. <laughs> Retarded kid. He took a retarded kid's <laughs> YouTube name from. And I shit you not. I mean, that's fine. This is web now. I, I shit you not. Then that's what he did. And I was like, oh my god. And then when he talks, like I don't know if you guys have ever seen this inter interview between him and Jesse Lee Peterson. It's one of the funniest interviews <laughs> <laughs> in history. And I said, I called it a battle of slow wits and bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like it's like two. Turpid sloths in a, in a Jedi battle. Uh, I feel, you know, I, I take some pride in that, like, we have never had someone on the show uh, from an opposing viewpoint who either wouldn't come back or isn't willing to come back, but he did upload our debate to his channel and then immediately deleted it. Right, because everybody kept telling him, dude, you got slaughtered. Like, what happened? And it was just bad because... You got to understand, a lot of us who were raised by women, women don't have to answer questions because, well, they're women and somebody wants to sleep with them so they can get away with a lot more than what a man can. Right. And what a, man, a woman will do is just give an absolution to what you said, which shuts it down. Like she'll say, you'll say when you made a stat about uh, the black homes. So you're saying all. And you're like, when the hell did I just say all? But they will keep saying that to make sure that you can no longer make the argument like they tell me all black women aren't like that i'm like i never said they all were but here's the problem yeah whenever you're, whenever you're depicted this way by yourselves you never argue it again go to any comedian and they'll tell you about being raised by single mothers and abusive single mothers and it'll be a joke and they will laugh at it my mama used to beat me with a rope with a <laughs> robo yeah mine did too and you think minute <laughs> Like, Preach! Yeah. Like, yeah. This is horrible. This is a felony. Ah, my fucking funny. <laughs> I used to, I swear to you, I used to do this. My brother used to laugh his ass off where someone would come out. We would tune into Deaf Comedy Jam. And I swear to you, I would just, I was like a kid. I was just like a smart ass kid. And all I would say is, you know I'm black. Ah! And we'd clap and laugh. And that was it. And literally, they would, you know who the worst is at that? The worst. Here's the thing. Dave Chappelle, hysterical. Eddie Murphy, hilarious. Richard Pryor, one of the best. I find Chris Rock Awful. Just a personal thing. But yeah. worse is that uh, Leslie Jones. Have you ever mm. watched her stand-up? I hate with a capital eight. <laughs> I hate Leslie Jones. She's a walking stereotype, and nobody has a problem. Well, I know people will get mad if you say if you say the N-word, but just this is her actual bit. She's, I'm watching it, and she's going, she's sitting there, and she's like, she's like, you know, because y'all know I ain't shot a dunk on a new... And that's what she, like, and I'm like, what? So it's basketball... N-word, violence, ah, and people laughing. I'm sitting there like, I can't believe, I can't believe this made it out. Like, I was sitting there watching Precious, for example, and I'm sitting there, uh, there is a scene in there where this very rotund black girl, okay, um, she, she is illiterate and is stealing a bucket of fried chicken. And I'm watching this going, are you shitting me? This this is what was nominated. If you ever saw the film, literally, an illiterate, giant, fat, pregnant teen is stealing a bucket of fried chicken. I'm going, I just can't believe the left gets to, and I guess it was some commentary on like, you know, it was it, it was so offensively bad. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, if you, I, I did a story last week. It's not funny, but there's a black guy who got killed while eating a bucket <laughs> of chicken by the police. And I said, why couldn't he have quinoa summer? Why did he have to have chicken? What did he was the watermelon available? Like I, I'm 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 looking at this and I'm thinking, like these stereotypes just come out and they come out. But the people who play to the stereotype more than anybody are black people themselves. And then they get mad when people repeat them. There's no way that Pressure should have been nominated for anything other than the worst movie that year. But Monique it, deserved the nomination for actor. She was amazing in it. Right, but if you look at the context of what they're doing in their movies, 
they constantly do the same thing. It really bothers me that the people who are stereotyping black people the most are black people. And I'm going to go a step farther, and this is where people get mad at me. The black women are the cause of a lot of this violence that you see in the black neighborhoods. The, the numbers prove it. The fact that you see them fighting all the dack on time. When you take fathers out of these homes, it's creating these huge problems. And nobody talks about it. Barack Obama said black women are the backbone of the black community and black men need to pay child support. This is your president said this. <laughs> now, you're, you're, you're the backbone. You, give the backbone some money. <laughs> at, at the back, at, this is the backbone and black people got scoliosis at this point. <laughs> yes, exactly. They're like it, a Doc Holiday going out west because they have tuberculosis. <laughs> It is, oh my God! It's so yeah. I'm I'm glad to to hear. It is so nice to hear a black man tell the truth for once. <laughs> I couldn't believe that guy said it, and like you know what he meant. We were sitting there like, oh my God! I can't believe this guy said this. Um, wow! It is uh, it, it is it is really unreal that we are at this time, and that what you say is just. I mean, so much flack that you catch for it. It's it's it just is one of those things that that is one. I will say this as far as white privilege. I am definitely not beholden to a dogmatic racial ideology that black people are held to. I can be, and it's like, you're an idiot, you're a race because you're a Republican, but I'm not excommunicated as a white person. For a black person, I will definitely say that that is a burden that, that we don't have, where if you go off the reservation, they do not play nice. Yeah, you can uh, vote Democrat or Republican. Um, you can eat chicken or quinoa. You can, you can uh, listen to rap or rock. Or country, as a black person, I have to listen to rap and R&B, or I'm trying to be white. I have to speak with a certain addiction, uh, or I'm trying to be white. I have to vote Democrat, or I'm a sellout. Literally, they call you a sellout for not voting Democrat. And if you think about where that puts you as black people, here's what I've been dealing with. I've had people threaten my life. They put my address out on the internet. Uh, one woman threatened to rape and murder my daughter because of my YouTube video. Wait, a woman did? Yes. How does well, that go? How does that happen? Well, because like I said on my show, black uh, black females are just um, males with vaginas. But now that's, 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 that's another story. But the point is, like, she's able to say this, and there's no backlash from the other people. They were literally saying, well, he deserves it because uh, of what he says. There's a guy who's a... Um, a big time movie maker, I get not a big time movie maker, but you may have heard of him, Tyreek Nasheed. He's Mr. Pro Black. Is that the guy? And that's the guy who everyone on the on the One film the buys. Show. Everyone's like, well, yeah, he won't come he on the show. Have, he would have. He would have crushed Crowder. I don't know if he's a filmmaker. He's such a such a beast on the debate. Yeah, he uh, made a film called a few films called Hidden Colors, hmm. and it's supposedly about uh, how black people are magical and melanin is great and it, it cures everything and white people are trying to siphon melanin out of black people. Now, melanin is what gives us our skin sure. color. But this same man who made this great film about how great melanin is also has a character on YouTube where he's making fun of me. The character's name is Crispy. He's making fun of him because he's so black, because I'm so black. And all the black people laugh at this character called Crispy because he loves white women and cocaine and all he does is help white supremacy. Now, black people who are saying that melanin is magical laughs at black people who are my color if you grew up in a black neighborhood, i don't even think of you as that black i knew a guy from barbados who i mean i swear to you at our graduation dance he shut off the lights and it was, it was nature's camouflage it was so dark i don't even see you as that like see it's like in the middle of the spectrum well no black people have been so whitewashed in america that they the biggest form of supremacy that faces most black people every day is black supremacy, not white supremacy. Blacks make it harder for blacks to live. Blacks make it to where if you move out of the neighborhood, you're a bad guy. If you talk different, you're a bad guy. In a way, they're but, enslaving themselves. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, that's what's happening. Blacks are held to this weird standard of uh, failure. And I remember a friend of mine um, who dropped out of college so he could sell dope. I shit you not. Because he was, his reasoning was, while in college, the people kept making fun of him, saying he's trying to be white and he's changed and he's different. And he had lived his whole life around these people. These were his friends. He wanted their acceptance. So he was willing to ruin his future. Gosh, that's, that is absolutely awful. Um, but it also, the problem with that, too, is then you get, like with the Trump thing, you get into far alt-right where they do make it about race. There are legitimate people now who are like, no, they just have a lower IQ. 
Uh, no, it's just it's not a cultural thing. It's just a race. Why? Why are black? Why are they so poor off in Africa? And and I, I understand, I understand what they're trying to say. But even if you look at it, it's because of horrible uh, uh, political systems and culture. Really, it is true. Now, you have to say, well, why does that happen wherever, like in these black nations? All right, that's a conversation to have. But they want to make it about melanin, therefore mm-hmm. inferior. And that's a real problem, too. And, and I feel like um, you're seeing more of that because mm-hmm. they've been forced to reject what we know to be true. For example, black people commit disproportionately more crime. And if you say that, you're a racist. And so I think you have a lot of people now who are going, you know what? All right, fine. I'm going to go full-blown racist as a rejection of it. Well, I brought up the 52% stat. And even when you say blacks are only 13% of the population, if you break it down to who's actually committing the crimes, it's only about 5% of the population that's doing it. It's a demographic of males between a certain age that's doing this. But to say it makes you a racist. To, for me to say it makes me an Uncle Tom or a sellout. And it's strange that you cannot hold black people accountable, but white people are supposed to hold other white people accountable. Think about it. Yeah, no, it's it's a good point. I will I will say this, too. You know, I did have a, a, a black person once uh, try to... It's funny. Someone told me they said this was white boy punking. Uh, one of my, my black friends at church when I told him the story. I didn't know if that's a term. That's a term he used. So I have a dog, Hopper. He's a doggo Argentino. Uh, so for people who don't know, it looks like an all-white pit bull mixed with a Great Dane. So, you know, listen, in the inner cities where, you know, in Michigan, uh, they were overbred because people thought, oh, this is like a bigger than a pit bull a little bit, but they, they're not fighting dogs. They're hunting dogs. And so they've been discarded, so he's a rescue. Well, I was driving to uh, Texas for Thanksgiving, and I stopped by Choctaw Casino. And uh, I was just letting Hopper go to the bathroom. So big, gleaming white, very handsome dog. And a black guy came up, and he just said, he said, oh, man, thanks, you found my dog. I said, sorry, people are going to get mad at the impression. I said, it's just, I'm just doing impressions of whoever it is, so get over it, people. And I said, no, this is not your dog. He said, yeah, no, the man, that's, that's my dog. That's my dog. That's, that's a dog of Argentino. That's my dog. I said, nope, sorry, this isn't your dog. He's, uh, he's actually from Michigan. So, no, man, you bet, I ain't even lying to you. You better give me my, and he started walking up to me. And so I took Hopper, I put him in the back of the car, I closed it, and I locked it. And I walked right up to him, and I said, that's not your dog. Don't come any closer. And he, oh, my bad, my bad. Oh, my dog's not fixed. And he walked, he walked away. Um, it changed at the drop of a dime. And my friend said, he said, yeah, he said a lot of these people are taught that, that white people are afraid of them. He said a lot of yeah. times pit bulls are rescues. And so you have a lot of white people who just go, they're rescuing a pit. And a guy goes, oh, it's my dog. And they go, oh, I'm sorry. And they give them the dog because they figure maybe the dog got lost. He said that's very common. And he said we use the term like punking. And he was very surprised that you didn't go along with it. It's, it's yeah, that. The, uh, have you ever seen the movie War Dogs? No. You need to see it. Number one, it's a good movie. But number two, uh, uh, Jonah Hill, the exact same thing happened to him. He was having a, a he shows where he walks up to these black guys and he's uh, buying weed from them. He gives them $500. They take the money and then they just look off. They sit there. And he's like, you know, where's my product? And they said, excuse me, white boy. He's like, where's my product? They were like, you didn't, you don't have any product. He said, but I just gave you money. They said, you didn't give a shit, white boy, and you better walk off. Does he walk so off? Said, uh, yeah, well, he says, oh, okay, my bad. Well, he walks off, but he goes to his car and he pulls out an AK. <laughs> <laughs> but this is something that happened when I was young. I remember, and I hate to admit it, I took a white dude's Jordans. I took a white dude's Nintendo. <laughs> He gave, he, I was like, let me borrow it. And, and I could see the look on his face because he knew I already had like three of his things and he knows borrow means you're not getting it back. But he still did it? He still did it because he <laughs> up his ass. So, so a lot of black, well, yeah, and that's the problem they run into when they, they can't. I mean, that's one thing I've always talked about this. And we have to let you go because I could go all day with this. Um, <laughs> when I wear a blue t-shirt or blue anything and my glasses, I have had, <laughs> I can't count how many people, black people, say you look like Clark Kent. And I think the big reason is just because they're not used to seeing a pretty big white guy with glasses. So kind of nerdy, but also bigger than them. Um, right. And so I do, I definitely have run into, you know, in, in grappling, for example, in Brazilian, you know, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Judo, where um, there's this assumption that you're intimidated, but it all goes away once you get on the mats. Um, so it's, it, I've, I've kind of encountered it, but, uh, you know, I didn't know if it was an actual thing. So, well, thanks for your transparency. You took Nintendo and Jordans. Yes, I did, and he can't say anything about it because the statute of limitations is done. And- <laughs> <laughs> it is true, though. I will say a lot of white people are absolutely terrified of black people. 
I mean, it's, and even the progressive liberals, a lot of them are, are, are scared and um, they don't want to admit it. Um, you know, my family goes to a church that's, say, 40 percent black, 40 percent white and 20 percent other. I've, I've been around it so much. Um, but even then, I would be lying if I were to say, you know, if I'm, if I'm in an area of Detroit or if I'm in an area of South Dallas and, uh, you know, not someone like you, I wouldn't think twice, but people who are mimicking criminal yeah. culture, uh, even if they're white, I guess at that point, so it's a moot point, pants down to their ankles. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be on alert. Well, if you think about it, and I want you to tell your liberal friends, if you love black people so much and you think the people in the inner city are being mistreated, why is your home around white people? Even Tariq Nasheed, Mr. Pro-Black Talk, um, make all these hidden color films. Guess where he lives? Right in the Hollywood Hills. So he doesn't live around any of those so-called black people that he's standing up for. What does that tell you? You don't believe the stuff you're saying yourself. Ice Cube tried this once. He tried to live in, a na in the neighborhood when he was broke away from NWA because he was saying he's down and he's going to stay around amongst blacks. He explains why he moved. He said, I, they kept robbing me because they knew I had money. <laughs> <laughs> nobody, nobody uses the words white supremacy, uh, white supremacist, um, race soldiers more than him on his timeline. It's like he's getting paid per per I use of it. No, you mean Tariq Nasheed. Tariq Nasheed. Yep. He's also like a full time. He's job. also a dumbass because the color is not hidden. It's the color purple. We've all learned this. Sorry, that was a horrible joke. But uh, oh my gosh, yeah, I, I need to. See, I didn't know he was a filmmaker. Spike Lee is just. Awful, awful. And is it because he's black? No, he's a shitty filmmaker. He's he's never really made a watchable film beyond maybe do the right thing. But, Malcolm X to me, I like. Oh, I, like. I didn't realize that was him. But that's because you're kind of beholden to the actual story. And even then, he screwed that up by sticking himself in as a character. That's like Quentin Tarantino. It's like George Lucas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or like Quentin Tarantino, wherever he puts himself <laughs> in, you're like, ah, 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 the camera is specifically not made for these nooks and crannies in a face. Right, and he just get worse as, as he ages. It's just a bad deal. Oh, but, he's gross. Uh, but if you just think about it, guys, you have to just realize that a lot of these people are getting paid off of other people's mis uh, being miserable. And as your producer stated, he just says race soldiers, race this, race that all day. He's playing to people's insecurity. He's playing to people not. They're really, a lot of these blacks are looking for an answer. Mm -hmm. And they're getting it from the wrong places. Yeah. Here's here's a question for you. As, uh, this is my black light question I've been thinking about today. Um, <laughs> since we have since one we of have the, one. Uh, the have colored one. folk on, <laughs> but but really, uh, if follow my logic here, this is what I'm trying to process. If Black Lives Matter, if the big part of their goal is to, that you uh, make you aware of the racism that's always existed, that's always been around, that's always been going on, uh, you just haven't been. It's just, they're just bringing it to surface. I have seen so many friends on Facebook constantly saying, you know what? My whole life, I'm 30 something years old. My whole life, I've never been afraid of police. I was, I was not even, you know, never had any bad experiences. But all of a sudden, now every time the lights go on in the back of my car, I'm afraid I'm going to die. People who say, you know, I was, I'm now more afraid of the police than I ever was of the gang life in my, you know, growing up, you know, the Crips and the Bloods in my neighborhood. Um, is that a victory for Black Lives Matter for them? For so many people to be afraid that when they never were, if this is so prevalent, why have they are just now aware of this? It's if it's question. been going on for so long. It's a lie. You may not like Chris Rock, but he said it. He said, I'm not afraid of Al-Qaeda. I'm afraid of our nigga. <laughs> well, he also had a hilarious thing about not about uh, not getting shot by the cops. Remember that bit? Not getting your ass kicked. <laughs> yeah. like, now it's like, don't run. If a cop have to run after you, he's bringing an ass kicking with him. <laughs> and he's like these basic tips. But, of course, now he would support the Black Lives Matter and all this stuff, you know, because he's... And, and again, I'm not for excessive force. And that's one of the things no. we need to push, that the cops are not being trained correctly. But you're right. Most black people are not just sitting there afraid. Now, what I am afraid, even though I have money, I'm still afraid when I swipe my ATM card that it just might have no money in there. Just that's a, pro a byproduct of being black. You just think it's not going to work. <laughs> or you do think when you, when you get pulled over sometimes, I think he's just going to give me a ticket. Like, I can't unzip my, I can't slightly unzip my pants and get out of a ticket. That doesn't work for me like it does for a woman to slightly pull a shirt down. So I understand. But then a white guy called my show last night. He said, look, I'm uncomfortable when the cops pull me over, too. Yeah, we thinking, both are. Yeah. I mean, we, I've always talked about that. Was it? Jer I mean, Jared has his concealed carry. Concealed carry. That's and you're terrifying always, when it happens. Like, hey, and most of the time, and I've, I've known officers, whether you're black or white, if you have a concealed carry and you're really... Uh, straightforward. You said you've been let out of tickets because you're like, officer, I have my right to carry, and they appreciate. Well, it. yeah, the first thing they said is like, "Hey, that's a smart move. I appreciate. You know, he's glad I'm out there." 
Um, but the first, when you first walk up, you're like, how do I, am I doing this right? Do I have my hands in the right place? Am I, is my wallet not behind my gun where I have to reach to my, past my gun to get my wallet? Like it's, it's a terrifying experience if you, until like, you know, it eases up. As a matter of fact, every time I see, uh, cop lights in my, my heart, like jumps out of my chest. Me too. Yeah. And I have my concealed carry. And the weird thing is you said that you say up front that you have it. I'm afraid to do that. If they're just pulling me over for speeding, I don't say anything and just try to let them give me the ticket and let them go because I honestly think that's going to lead to something else. Uh, just like the YouTube video showed these two men walking down the same stretch of road, both of them had an AK, legally were able to carry them. The white guy was able to walk and not be harassed. The black guy, same thing in the same area. And literally they kept calling 911 on him. There is an element of sure. people are used to looking at something or seeing something and television doesn't help and black people don't help let's just call it what it is white people are putting out images of black people being violent but i'm one of the black people who put out an image of black person being violent by stealing uh jordans and, and nintendo <laughs> well, so I, I, I will say this it, again just just not really knowing the situation processing it if i see a white guy open carrying an ak i right away think that they are a far right libertarian making a point because yep. I never see it. If I do see a black person with an AK, my mind doesn't go there right away because I also know there aren't many far right wing black people that it's much more likely that the AK is for something else. Um, yep. That would just be my quick, again, you know, discrimination uh, generalizations are evolutionary psychological advancements to try and protect your you, life. Now, if that black guy had a big old fat belt buckle and a Confederate flag hat, you probably would associate him. With the far right you groups. Was, well, at that point, you thought it was Cowboy Troy, but that's a whole nother thing. <laughs> yeah. Cowboy Troy. Yeah, it's, it's exa exactly. <laughs> the worst. But I, but I will say, well, same thing. I will say, you know, uh, was it we saw that guy there at, at the public park? Black guy, shirtless, greasy, like Randy from Trailer Park Boys with his open carry yeah. gun. And he did. You could see his boxers. It was mm -hmm. weird. It was weird. And we were like, okay, we immediately were like, well, not gang activity because he's open carrying, but a shirtless black guy, greasy, looked out of it. Uh, they called him a peacekeeper or something like that, kind of policing the area. Yeah, I don't so know. What, but my reaction to him would have been very different if he was just dressed as any of us are now, or a polo, or whatever it is, and open carrying. But it's like, well, it's not so much that you're black and open carrying, it's that you're greasy shirtless <laughs> with your pants low open carrying. Like, this is just a bizarre picture. Well, we don't talk about it, and I'm glad you brought it up, and I hope you talk about that more. I'm one of those proponents of... If we're really going to be so-called the liberals, because the liberals are the main people trying to shut down free speech, free thought, only they are supposed to have it, and only you're supposed to agree with it. If you're going to be honest in life, everyone has their prejudices, and those are the things, or, or everyone has their whatever you want to call it, but those are the things that helped us evolve and survive as people. And I'm tired of someone saying, you should treat all people the same. No, 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 you're not. No. Just like I don't let everyone into my house. If a guy is coming to my door and it's four in the morning and he's breathing hard and he's got dirt all over his face and his shirt's torn, I'm probably not going to just let him in my house. If a female comes to the door and she looks like Halle Berry, I'm letting her in. <laughs> There's a difference. I'm discriminating. I'm sorry. At that point, it's probably a dream. Right. <laughs> probably and need to I, wake up. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll no, as a kid, I was terrified of Asians. And let me tell you why. Because I always, I, I've always sort of had the gift of gab, and I've been able to talk myself out of bad situations. Being raised around a lot of like heart, like Chinese people, uh, you know, barely speak English, there was no negotiating at all. It was, you know, this happened. We had a guy who ran our prank shop. You know, we'd go get, like, exploding bubble gum and stuff. And uh, he would give us stuff that would, like, be broken. And it wouldn't work. I remember he gave me, like, a, one of those, uh, you pull out the gum and it snaps your finger. You know, like a little mouse trap. And we're going back. I was like, this, 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 is, uh, this is broken. He's like, no, no, you see, see, smack, not broken. You, no. I was like, well, I just, just get it, return it for another one. Sale, final. Sale, final. Final sale. And there was a kid thinking, like, Oh my gosh, if this guy wanted to kill me, I wouldn't be able to talk my way out of it because there was, n it didn't met like logic or any kind of empathy. I remember thinking of them as very robotic as a kid and being slightly afraid of Asian people. Well, you should have said them all already got though. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But I just remember like there was no, I was like, no, no, you, I, you just saw me. This is broken. It doesn't, sale final, sale final. I remember that like it was yesterday. I'm sitting there like, 
Like, no one else, in my experience at that point, as I a still kid, have to go and order your Chinese takeout. <laughs> yes, you exactly. Still do it. No, at that point, nowhere else. Like, I was like, oh, I'm sorry, kid. You know, it was a 75-cent thing. You were used to people, but the, the Chinese guy, sale final, like, didn't care. Well, black people apparently had the same experience because if you remember the movie Minister Society, which is old, remember what the hurry up and buy, like that's what it was. <laughs> it's true, and I do. But th- black people are uh, uh, a lot of them are afraid of Korean shopkeepers. Yeah, man, because they they just blow people away. But they their weave, and Korean shopkeepers may take the weave away. So, <laughs> yes. If you like this video, subscribe or click. What's playing next to me? It's taken from the full show. That's right. Every week, the full two-something-hour podcast. That's never going daily. And it's never going daily. Stop asking. But it's free. You can go watch it, play it in your car. Uh, It's better than texting and driving. 